What is going on, everybody? Welcome to Transport Fever. I'm your host for the evening, the Birdman, known as Falcon. Uh, this right here is a game that's coming out on November 8th. I do have a little bit of an early look at the game here today. Um, I'm planning on recording this episode, and if you guys enjoy what you see and would like to see some more up until release date at the very least, let me know in the comments and by leaving a like, and I'll consider covering more of this going forward, at least up until the release date itself. Now, if you're not familiar with Transport Fever, this is a really fun and in-depth, I guess, transportation simulator, but it feels a lot more than that. You'll be doing a bunch of, like, city planning, dealing with the needs of the people, traveling expenses, product movement, a bunch of stuff like that. And what's really cool is if you actually go into the campaign, which is what we'll be checking out today, you actually start off in the Wild West period. And as you progress with the campaign, you actually will come all the way up to modern times. So you'll be starting off with, like, horses and carriages, building little small dirt roads and building, like, you know, old school train tracks. And as you progress with the campaign, you come all the way to modern times with the, you know, 17 bombers. And I don't think there's actually F-17 bombers in the game because it's not a war game. Uh, this is a transportation game. But, you know, it's all the, the, the new high-tech transportation stuff like bullet trains and... I don't know, jets and shit. Do people take jets now and rockets to places? I don't know. People travel really fast these days. I just fly everywhere. You get it? Because Falcon Bird. Okay, whatever. Anyway, let's get into the campaign here as soon as possible. America, the land of opportunity, demonstrates your talent and rise to become the most powerful transport company in the most powerful country in the world. You know what's so fun about that? Is that it's kind of like a little subtle, like, you know, America meme. Because, you know, they literally say America. Uh, it's not America, but, you know, it's kind of close to it. Now, if you check out Europe. The old continent is constantly yielding great new inventions. Be part of this rapid technological progress and found numerous thriving transport companies in Europe. A lot better spoken as well. A lot calmer. <laughs> Why with the America when you have the guy yelling at you? Uh, that's what we do, though. We, we apparently like to yell a lot. Anyway, we will be checking out America because that's um, one of the missions I already did for that. I'm kind of more comfortable with showing you something I'm already comfortable with as opposed to coming in blind and being like, oh, what do I do? So we'll check out the America one for now. The future lies in the West. We will bring progress to this barren swath of land full of simple-minded country bumpkins and savage natives. But transporting the required goods is painstaking and expensive. A railroad from east to west, now that would be a real gold mine. But the competition never sleeps. The Central Pacific Railroad has already started construction on a line from the Pacific. Let's beat them to it and open up the Wild West. Welcome to the Wild West. It is the year 1864 and we find ourselves in the tranquil settlement of Cheyenne, somewhere in the middle of nowhere. The tracks from the east end here. Our job, to construct a railroad line to the west. The first transcontinental railroad in the whole of America. The investors have given us a rather modest sum of money, but that'll have to do if we don't want to scare them off. If the competition carries on working at the current pace, they're expected to reach the goal before us. Let's spare ourselves this disgrace and get started. All right, let's spare ourselves a disgrace. So, it should be noted, this game, by the way, is very, very lively. You probably won't notice it too much right now on the Wild West map because, you know, it's simpler times, less population, but once you get to the modern maps, you will see the cities just thriving with life. It's really crazy. It could sometimes even affect your gameplay performance. Just a bit of a heads up in case you're kind of on a, more of a lesser built rig and stuff like that. Anyway, let's see. Uh, the first thing we've got to do is uh, start our mission here. If we want to beat the competition to the gold, we'll need more workers, and workers need feeding. Once the men are half full, this business with food could generate some extra income for us. Right. There's gonna be a lot of talking, so I'll try to, like, you know, simmer down when the actual in-game dialogue's going on. So right now we have to deliver grain from Cheyenne Farm all the way to the Cheyenne Getra Dilugger. Okay, sure. We'll call it the, the Cheyenne G. That's a lot easier for me. Uh, build truck stations from the farm to the G. I can do that. So, number one, you, my friend, need to probably move away for now. I want to keep you there just so I know what I'm doing, but let's go into truck stations down here. So this will be for railroads. This will be for, like, road vehicles, um, sea vehicles and ships and stuff like that, and also the aerial ones. But obviously, we probably won't be dealing with any planes here in the Wild West map just yet. Let's go into the train stations, right? Or not the train station, but the... Well... I would call it a, a, a vehicle station, but we're going to be using wagons with horses first, so just, we just call it a, a regular station, even though like, the game calls it a truck station itself. 
Uh, let's go ahead and pick this one. It's going to be for two terminals. This one's for four terminals. I don't think we need four just yet. I don't want to necessarily spend too much money early on because there is a, a bit of a reward. If you're looking to get the medals and extra currency and stuff like that, if you don't bug your investors for more money because you're broke, um, you do get some rewarded for it as well. Okay, so I guess we'll place you right over here. It should be noted as well, we're running in real time, we could speed up the time and everything, but this right here, let me pause momentarily so I can explain this. Um, we're trying to beat the Pacific Railroad from, you know, building, being the first, you know, national railroad, country railroad, whatever. So, it's going to be a bit of a timer in the background running. So, if you want to complete the campaign, you want to make sure your railroad system connects everything together before they do. So, um, keep in mind, there is a bit of a timer system down here as well. So, every now and then, it should be important for you to pause. You're going to be kind of like pondering stuff out. Um, so, let's go over here and do one more station. Of course, when the game is paused, you cannot place items down, though. So, that's going to be kind of like the... The issue you might run there, or encounter on occasion, I suppose. So I'm going to place you down over here, and that's done. Now, we have to construct a depot and buy a horse-drawn cart that can carry the grain from one from the farm over to the G, as we're calling it now. So we want to use this guy, and we want to come down here. And this here will be our road depot. We have a tram depot as well, but that's going to be for trains, which we're not using now. So road depot is what we're looking for, and I will place you... I guess somewhere in between is not a bad idea. I normally like to play stuff in between the actual lines themselves. So this is good right here. And after we've done that, we have to actually buy the horse. So let's click in here, buy road vehicle, and we're going to go into, well, let's see. Horse carriage is going to be for passengers. Remember, right now we're moving grain from an area to the other one, so we need the horse wagon. And this will tell you right here what type of cargo it actually carries. So, we want this bad boy here. We could buy one or two. I think I'm going to buy two right now. Make some more money that way. And let's buy a second one as well. Perfect. So, once you have your vehicle bought, you want to assign a line for them to actually follow. Otherwise, you just hang out there. So, let's go into set line all, and we'll do a new line. And we want to go from the the farm station over to the G station. So we click on that one and we click over here. And there you go, that's our first road. And what we want to do now is go over here. Actually, automatically, my two horses are now over here moving grain from there over to the Cheyenne for the people to actually work in, make a little bit of money on the side for us, so on and so forth. So we can now cancel this out. And we speed this up as well. They will move faster, but for now we want to go into real time. So that's been done. So with that over here running in the background, what I could do now is click on this here. It is rumored that a huge nugget of gold is buried somewhere in the wasteland before us. The first settlers are said to have buried it somewhere out in no man's land while on the run from gunslingers. An aging saloon girl in Laramie knows more. Alrighty, and I'm just giving you guys a little bit of a close up here. As I mentioned, there's actually a lot of people here considering this is like a small little Cheyenne town in the old, or at least like barely booming Wild West era. But um, once you get into the modern cities, man, it gets so packed. So let's zoom on out over here. And let's see. This, by the way, that we just clicked on, this whole issue here with the Mysterious Gold Nugget, that's more of a side mission. You get a medal for that, and um, I think you also probably get some money. But in order to complete this, you have to go to Laramie first, find out more information about the Gold Nugget, and then it kind of takes you over to the Native Americans that you have to talk to them, and it's kind of like a big issue, but it's really cool because it's a side mission you could do meanwhile you build your entire transportation system meanwhile, so it's pretty cool. Let construction begin. In order not to fritter away our meager starting capital already on the first leg of the journey, it'd be sensible to choose a route that avoids costly blasting operations to build tunnels. All right, so now we have to build our first rail from Cheyenne to Laramie. Um, I could go to Laramie right now and start talking to that woman about the gold nugget, but I'm going to wait until we actually have a railroad system from Cheyenne over to Laramie first. So, let's make sure we're now in real time, so we're not over here spending too much time trying to set this up. Charts are off now, so that'll continue doing its thing over here. So now we have to build a passenger station in Laramie and connect it to the existing route, or route, whichever one you prefer, route, route, with tracks. So, let's go over to Laramie here first, which is going to be down over here. And I guess we could click on this to hear about the Golden Nugget. Let's get that out of the way now. The huge nugget is buried in the desert, says the lady in the saloon. That is, of course, incredibly vague. However, she also seems to think that the Indians might have already found the nugget and then reburied it, as in their minds, gold cannot be eaten. <laughs> of course. All right, so here's our train station. 
Um, and this is what we have to connect over to Cheyenne. So I normally like to place it somewhere over here at the edge of the, or the outskirts of the town anyway. Once we have whatever that might be here, I think that might be like uh, metal of some kind, and which is something we pick up from, let's see, from Rollins. So we have to come down to Rollins. As you can see over here, they're producing that metal, which we could then move from Rollins down to Laramie and actually produce tools with that. So it's going to be the entire process of connecting everything together and having the proper items being delivered and transported back and forth. Uh, for now, though, let's get the station up and running. So you are going to be coming down... I would say right about here. Now, we have to connect this all the way back to Cheyenne. And you want to do this without necessarily going underground or over the mountains as well. So you can indeed go underground, but um, it's going to cost you an arm and leg to actually drill, drill through all that. Or even more if you want to go above mountains and stuff like that, if you want to have some elevation and stuff like that. So what we're going to be doing here is going into railroad tracks. And we want to make sure we can connect from here all the way down to here, which is kind of a bit of a trip in itself. I guess we'll start off here, though, and try to make sure we somehow wind up over there without necessarily going through the ground. So, let's see about first and foremost coming in through here. Mm, that'll do for now. So, confirm that one. And over here, by the way, is going to be the actual stopping track. So this is an actual rotary that exists, but when the train passes by, it'll kind of like bring down the little barricades and be like, Hey, you can't pass, otherwise you'll get run over by the train. So, that over here is now connected over to this land, which is great. What if we start moving down through here? Make it a lot easier for us to kind of plot the route afterwards. So, let's see. I'm trying to keep it cheap again. 126. 118. It's pretty good. 207 if we do it this way. This isn't too bad. Now, we're going to need a curve at some point, though. And the curvature is going to really screw you up in this game, so you might want to take really close attention to them once you place them down. Um, uh, 219. We got a curvature there. Meanwhile, we got 377. I think this will work. I think that'll work. Let's see here. Yeah, it's, that's fine. That's fine still. So we'll place it down through here, and now we need this connection down to here. So I think the cheapest route is going to be the 636 one. I mean, you're going to spend a lot doing this anyway. It's a really long track anyway, but this might be the cheapest outcome we have. So let's go ahead and click on this one here. Wonderful. This one leg completed already. However, we're already encountering our first difficulties. It was very good of the government to place this land at our disposal free of charge. If it weren't for those damned Indians, they've pitched their tents right in the middle of our planned route. Our scouts seem to think they're rather displeased with the white man and his iron horse. And that's us. They don't like the iron horse at all, do they? Okay, so we have now connected the connection from Cheyenne over to um, Laramie itself. Now, we do, I think, have to get a train unless we already have one. I don't think we have one, though. Let's see. Let me come on down over here. I, I have to go talk to the natives as well, but we'll do that pretty, pretty soon. Let's see. Let me click out of here. And no, we don't have a train just yet. So let's start transporting people here first and foremost. Uh, we need a locomotive, and this is going to be for passengers alone, so we don't need any cargo at the moment. So I guess we could probably save a little bit of money with the Baldwin Six Wheels. Quite a bit of money, actually. This one carries, let's see... Well, we need this and a wagon for the people as well. So, yeah, I think we buy the Baldwin Six Wheels, and the wagon we'll give is going to be a passenger car for passengers, because everything else is going to be for, let's see, cargo, cargo. Yeah, so we'll pick up the passenger car right here. I think early on you just need, like, probably one. So if you're trying to spend, like, not spend too much money, I think one should be fine, so we'll do just one. It'll connect automatically. And we want to set up, obviously, the the route for that. So, new line. I'm going to come down from Cheyenne all the way down to Laramie. Perfect. And as you can see now, it should be taking off. We have our first passenger train here pretty soon. Alrighty, we're making some progress. So let's cancel out of here. Get cancel out of that as well. And let's see, let's see, let's get this up and running. And I just want to see how this is going to work out here. Alrighty. Very cool. Rotate. Oh yeah, can you actually see the guy? You can see the guy in there. 
<laughs> that's pretty cool. All right, so that's up and running over here. Great. Now, let's go over here and build the rail from Laramie to Rollins. So we have to go talk to the natives here pretty soon. Natives are going to be down here, if I'm correct. Those damned Indians. They're sabotaging our work and are said to have physically attacked some of our men. We need to do something. We have various options. Either we buy them a piece of land of equivalent value, which could get pretty costly, or we could settle it the old-fashioned way, which would probably cost us our good reputation in certain circles. Or else we could try to bribe them with fire water, although its consumption is known to make one rather aggressive. Now, that right there is kind of like a bit of a hint. There is, um, I guess a consequence type system in the game where whatever you choose is going to have an effect on later events. You can see right here it says some decisions affect later events. So, um, I obviously don't want to fight them. I don't want to have my reputation tarnished here. I guess I'm going to bribe them with some fire water, which is only going to cost us 10,000. So right now, in terms of money-wise, it's going to help us out because the other one is going to be buy and exchange lands and it costs us 200,000, which is a lot of money. So we'll try to bribe them with fire water for now and see if that does anything for us. So with that done, it is now time for us to hook up Laramie over to Rollins. And once we do that, we'll be able to start moving the product from here back to Laramie and actually start producing some tools for more sales and stuff like that. So let's see, you guys don't have a trade station, do you? No, I have to hook you up with one here. Uh, oh, by the way, this is the continuation of the Gold Nugget quest. A small Indian boy who was evidently better disposed towards us than his father's has whispered the following to one of our people. In the mountain that the sun kisses goodnight and where the shadow of the great tree pierces the heavy rock, you will find nothing that can be eaten. What is that supposed to mean? Alrighty, so it's a bit of um, a riddle of some kind, I guess. Um, the, the problem is I haven't been able to figure this out just yet. In the mountain that the sun kisses goodnight, I suppose it's probably trying to say, like, you know, sun where it rises, where it sets from itself. Um, I gotta find a great tree that pierces the heavy rock. I haven't figured it out just yet. But the way you do figure it out is once you know where it's at, you come over to the terrain tool itself and you can actually lower, raise land, smooth it out, etc. It's gonna cost you money to do so, so unless you're really comfortable as to you know where the location of this nugget is, you might want to hold off until you're ready for that. But let me give you a small little demonstration here. Um, I'm at 1.14, huh? It cost me 4,000. That's fine. So as you can see over here, we lowered the terrain a little bit, and you can also go ahead and smooth it out as well. So, pretty cool. Alrighty, so right now we still need to start making some money from the Laramie to Cheyenne trips. Uh, I'm almost considering even putting in another horse over here so more of this actually transfer back and forth. Because it's going to cost me quite a bit of money to get that connection from Laramie to Rollins, I'm pretty sure. Uh, so I guess we should probably start off by... Well, I mean, if we made peace with them, we should be able to kind of roll by, right? <laughs> Ideally. Let's rotate you a little teeny tiny bit. And will this work? Seems to work. I'm not destroying the buildings right there anyway. Okay. So that could work that way. And then we'll go ahead and put the railroad track and we just straight up connect it from here. Down to Laramie. Are we connecting? Let's see. Let me get closer. Okay. We're connecting here. <laughs> We're rolling by the natives pretty closely, but it's being allowed to happen. So, do we need to raise or lower? No. Nope. No. Nope. 237, that's the ideal one. The problem with the Indians has been settled, but we've already encountered our next challenge. Before us lie miles and miles of nothing but bone-dry steppe. We'll need to make sure we don't run out of water. However, there should be iron ore deposits that we can exploit to earn a bit of extra money and to produce tools. Alrighty, and that's what we talked about, creating tools. And then over here as well, we have, let's see... The wells themselves, which is, you know, dry land over here. Alrighty, so, I think with this so far, we have a pretty good establishment as to what we're doing. I'm gonna wrap it up here for this one, guys. As I mentioned, if you want to see some more, do let me know in the comments, and I'll go ahead and 
make a couple more videos at least up until the release date. Right now we're going to focus on when we get back. If we come back is uh, move the iron ore over to Laramie. So getting some tools being, tools being product, produced, I should say. And uh, make some money because we're very, very dangerously close to having to ask for a loan. Which I'm trying to avoid having to do that. So I hope you guys enjoyed. Give a thumbs up. I will catch you next time.